Hey guys, welcome back to DigiArt Tutorials. My name is James and today we're going to cover CMYK and subtractive color systems. In a previous video we covered RGB and additive color wheels, so this is a follow-up to that video. There are actually way more color systems we can talk about like the NCS or the Munsell color wheel, but the Artist color wheel will be the last color system we'll talk about in another video. So if you're an artist or designer, these three color systems, RGB, CMYK, and the artist color wheel are a great foundation for understanding color. Let's dive into CMYK. The CMYK color system is mainly used in the printing world. The reason why is because light forms color differently than inks do. Digital formats deal with light, and inks deal with reflected light. Also, what's interesting with CMYK is that the secondary colors of the RGB color system are the primary colors for CMYK. The primaries are cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which stand for CMYK. I know what you're thinking. You might be thinking, how does K stand for black in CMYK? This is an age-old question, but the simple answer is the K stands for key. In four-color process printing, they align the cyan, magenta, and yellow printing plates with the black key plate, thus key. We'll go more into process printing in our next video. So for the past 100 years, we've realized that the CMYK color system gives us the widest array of colors you can mix from. However, they're often a little too harsh for painting, so artists use a different subtractive color system that uses red, yellow, and blue as primaries. Like before, we'll get into artist color wheels in another video. Let's simplify CMYK into its basic elements. Cyan, magenta, and yellow are the primaries, and if we mix those primaries together, we get the secondary colors. Red, green, and blue. When you mix all those colors together, eventually you'll get black. In the real world with printing, if we mix just CMY inks together, it will end up being a very muddy color. So that is why black is added to CMY so that it has a detailed, realistic, and complete look. You'll probably notice that this is the complete opposite of additive color. Additive color starts from black and adds light together to form white light. Subtractive color does the opposite and subtracts color from white light to eventually form black. This is probably the most confusing part of subtractive color since most people ask, wait, aren't you still adding the colors together so it's still technically additive? Well, it's very important to realize that mixing color does not necessarily mean adding. The add in additive color refers to the rays of light adding together to form new colors. When we mix subtractive colors together, the subtract part refers to how certain colors of light are absorbed or subtracted out. Whatever isn't subtracted or absorbed reflects back and forms the newly mixed color. That may sound confusing, but let me simplify this subtraction process. So first off, the word subtract in this process is basically another term for absorb, or the way light is absorbed. The subtractive process refers to how we first subtract from white light, remember not adding up to it, to get primary colors, and then how colors are subtracted or absorbed from those to form other colors, until everything is subtracted or absorbed into black. Let's use a diagram to show how we can subtract from white light to form colors. Remember, white light is the sum of all the colors, so it's our starting point. First, if we subtract red from white light, blue and green light remain, which together form cyan. Second, if we subtract blue, we're left with red and green, which form yellow. Lastly, if we subtract green, we're left with red and blue, which form magenta. Making the secondary colors is where things get really interesting. When you mix these primary colors together, certain colors of light are absorbed or subtracted, and the colors that aren't absorbed reflect back as the new color. For example, let's mix cyan and yellow together. First off, yellow reflects red and green light, and absorbs blue light. Cyan reflects green and blue light and absorbs red light. So when you mix cyan and yellow together, the blue light and red light are absorbed or subtracted and the green light reflects back because it's not absorbed. That same process is how magenta and yellow form red and how magenta and cyan form blue. That same process happens until all the colors are eventually absorbed or subtracted into black. It's easy to see now why this process is called subtractive color. So just remember, the additive color wheel forms color by adding light together and makes more light. The subtractive color wheel does the opposite. It forms color by subtracting from white light till everything is absorbed into black. Simply put, the more color you mix, the more light gets absorbed, eventually leading to complete absorption or darkness. Finally, if you're ever in Photoshop and Illustrator and need to switch to the CMYK color mode, here's how to do it. For Photoshop, simply go into Image, then Mode, 
then CMYK. For Illustrator, go to File, then Document Color Mode, then CMYK. I hope you enjoyed this small lesson on CMYK and Subtractive Color. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me anything in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.